Hi guys, Transform with Final Fantasy Island here. Um, yeah, my microphone is so much better quality now. Uh, my computer is fixed. Thank you, Primus. Um, I just want to say before I begin the video, thank you very much for your support of the previous video. It's been out like a day and a half and it's got amazing support. Uh, you guys have been commenting great ideas and I'm going to give some shout outs at the end of this video. So please stay tuned for that. But let's get straight into the video. So, let's go. So we're gonna have four deluxe figures, uh, two Voyager class and one leader class figures because sometimes in Transformers toy lines you get uh, four, you know, you get one leader class figure or you get two. So um, I thought I would change it a little bit. Um, so the first figure would be to take the 07 Studio Series Jazz and paint him blue and red. Turn him into smoke screen. I think that would be perfect. I never actually got the original Smoke Screen figure, um, but I did like his character in the IDW movie comics, and I think it would be great to see Smoke Screen make a return in the toy line. Maybe change his weapon as a throwback to the original blaster that actually like Jazz and Smoke Screen had in 2007, just to give a little throwback and differentiate it from the Studio Series Jazz. Now, second figure we have is the deluxe um, concept bumblebee but turn him into stealth bumblebee versus colors you guys might know that i am a big fan of stealth bumblebee i think the stealth bumblebee colors work a lot better reversed it's black and yellow to yellow and black i think it works much better for bumblebee in my opinion like cliff jumper maybe give him like an energon sword uh, as a throwback to his original figure and um, due to the original Stealth Bumblebee in 2007 actually having his battle mask equipped, um, keep the battle mask on the figure. Next would be to take the Dark of the Moon Soundwave and throw him back to the movie trilogy series. Uh, basically turn him into Sound Blaster basically. Turn him black with some red and maybe gold highlights. I think that would be really good. Uh, also paint uh, laser beak black, red and gold, I think that would be great to see Laserbeak like that. You know, maybe even paint him gold, maybe kind of Buzzsaw instead, or even retool Laserbeak into Ratbat, that would be, that would be good. Let me know what you guys think of that. The next one would be uh, to take the, uh, the Crowbar from Studio Series and turn him into an alternate Dread. Now, do you guys remember around the time of the last night, um, there were these alternate dread concept arts and they were basically alternate versions of hatchet, crowbar, uh, crankcase. They were weathered, uh, they had like red and blue highlights of paint smeared on them um, and they looked really good. I think it would be good to get the Studio Series crowbar and turn them into this alternate dread. Um, whether you call it crowbar or dreadbot, you know, it's up to you but um, I think it would be good to actually see these uh, last night dread concept arts in toy form. I think that would be very good. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of that. Starting the Voyager class figures, uh, we would take the Voyager class Bone Crusher and paint him uh, green and like a a beigey, yellowy, creamy colour. <laughs> and basically, turn him into Jungle Bone Crusher. The first ever Bone Crusher I owned was Jungle Bone Crusher. I never really got the original one until years later, so I think it would be incredible to see a modern return of Jungle Bone Crusher. In a perfect world, we would upscale Bone Crusher to maybe leader class, um, but um, who knows if Hasbro would actually do that. <laughs> um, next would be to take the Voyager class Brawl from Studio Series and paint him blue with gold highlights, turn him into Tankor. I got the original Legends class Tanker figure, and yeah, um, he, he's really good. It's just, he's just Legends. He's, you know, we, we don't actually have a big Tanker figure, and I think that's something that the fan, I think that's something the movie fandom has lacked for a long time. I think painting Brawl uh, into Tanker would be the right thing to do for Hasbro and I think it would satisfy a lot of movie fans, especially fans of Tankor and Brawl. Now, we're on to the leader class figure now. Um, this is an odd one, but um, bear with me here. 
Now, you guys might have seen my playthrough of Transformers Human Alliance from Sega. If you haven't, or if you want to check it out again, I'll leave it in the right hand corner of this video right now. Just click that link. But there is a sequel series, I've never played it, but I've watched it, uh, called Shadows Rising. Now, if you guys have not played that game and you care for spoilers, I think it would be good to skip to the end where I do the shout outs or click off this video entirely. Um, but if you guys don't care for the spoilers and you have played the game or you're just intrigued what I'm going to say, then here we go. So we take the leader class figure Jetwing Optimus Prime and we turn him into Galvatron. Now I bet you guys have like shook your head in like shock and be like, what? Have you lost your mind? This guy has gone crazy. Bear with me here, okay? So basically, in Age of Extinction in the film, uh, we see Joshua Joyce getting mad and hitting like a board of blueprints. And he basically states, he says, I modeled Galvatron after Optimus Prime. Why does he keep looking like Megatron? And we actually see visually on this blueprint board that he hits that uh, they were modeling Galvatron after Optimus Prime, the specifically the Optimus Prime in the first three Michael Bay films, which was the Peterbilt version of Prime. Whereas, obviously, in the story, Megatron, he's dead and he needs a new body, so he infects it with his chromosomes and turns it into the Galvatron we know to look like Megatron. Now, the thing is, there's no way that the Shadows Rising game is canon to, uh, to Age of Extinction. It's definitely an, a splinter timeline because Megatron is alive. The thing is, Megatron in Shadows Rising, he is kind of like captured and experimented on by KSI. Um, so, you know, in the same way that KSI experiment on Megatron, the Sentinel Prime head and Ratchet and all the Autobot remains. Now, in Shadows Rising, as I said, Megatron is alive and he breaks out and basically takes control of the KSI drones. And the thing is, KSI actually follows through and make their original Galvatron modeled after Optimus Prime. Because, ne because Megatron is alive and he doesn't have a need to find a new body for himself, he allows KSI to create their Galvatron after Optimus Prime, apart from it's colored in like the Nemesis Prime Scourge colors, um, like black and green, like a teal color. Um, and he flies, he's he Jetwing Optimus Prime as well. And the thing is in the Sega Transformers games, um, when you fight a villain, it shows their name, it says uh, Megatron, Starscream, Soundwave, Brawl, whatever. Um, whereas in Shadows Rising, when you fight the KSI clone of Optimus Prime, it's um, it doesn't identify him. And the TF Wiki just states Optimus clone. So with this knowledge, we can strongly assume that this is KSI's finished Galvatron if Megatron had never interfered. Have you got your mind blown? Because when I when I initially like thought of this, I was like, wow, how did I not see this before? Wow. Um, but I think that would be the right move. I think it would be good to see a new Nemesis Prime in the toy line. You know, I would never have thought an Optimus Prime could be called Galvatron, but there we go. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think of that idea. I know that took me a couple of minutes to actually explain my reasoning, but I didn't want to just say like, hey, let's just slap Galvatron on this Optimus Prime, who should be either called Nemesis or Scourge, <laughs> um, or evil Optimus Prime. And if you guys were a bit confused, uh, that's why I wanted to explain and then maybe blow your mind as well <laughs> in the process. Um, so yeah, onto the shout outs. Um, so you guys suggested some figures that I um, didn't think of. You suggested figures that I already planned for, but either way, I'm gonna give you guys shout outs. So here we go. So if you suggested a figure in previous video in the comments that I've actually used in this video, I'm gonna give you a shout out. So first one goes to Zero G Havoc YT, uh, Super Omega Prime MK2, Benno Pelka and Godzilla Guy 54. Thank you guys, I appreciate your support. And um, yeah, I know this video was a bit longer than the last one, but that's dip basically down to my uh, KSI Galvatron explanation. Um, if you guys actually want a separate video on that, like an actual kind of like lore video on Galvatron um, Optimus Prime, then let me know. 
um, I think that would actually be an interesting education topic for a lot of Transformers fans because I think it's probably one of those little facts that um, maybe people don't realise. I didn't realise it um, until I went in deep thought about it. So yeah, um, third video, third wave of Studio Select will be coming soon uh, and let me know what you guys think. In the meantime, please like, comment, rate, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Follow me on Instagram at tfm thousand. And as always, till all are one, and transform and roll out!